Long time no see everyone, it's your old mate Jakargon back at it again, this time with what is part 19 of building my sustainable capsule wardrobe. So as always, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comments are very much appreciated and there is a Discord link below if you want to keep in touch outside of videos too. So it's been a while since I've made one of these videos. I've done a couple of thrift pickup videos, but not actually one where I put the items together, style them, and talk a little bit more about them overall. I found it to be a bit more rewarding though, however, because if I do this kind of video when I've just gotten the items, it is sort of, you know, trying to picture how I'm gonna fit them in and make them work but doing them a bit later, say a month or two months down the track, I've had some time with the pieces, I've decided whether I wanna keep them on, and I've also figured out properly how to put them into my wardrobe rather than putting myself on the spot and kind of having a little bit of a stress freak out about it. So yeah, a win-win overall, I'd say. So looking at the pieces we have today, there are six of them overall, a few tops, a few bottoms, and also a pair of shoes. But unlike any other pair of shoes that I've gotten so far, and don't worry, they're not another pair of Rick Owens. Also to remember, all of these items are secondhand and thrifted. I mainly do most of my marketplace shopping online through Japanese marketplaces, and I've got videos on where I talk about those sort of things as well, in case you're interested. So looking at the first piece, we have this, well, it kind of looks just like a mound of fabric. But once I figure out, I always can never figure out where the top is. This is a Julius Mohair Alpaca Cardigan. Now I found this while just randomly browsing through clothes and the picture that the seller was using was them wearing it. And I thought it looked kind of nice as a little light number to wear over the top that also looked a little bit warm too. So I did pick it up because the price was right. And I did also like how it didn't really have buttons. Although it does actually have a button. I've never ever buttoned it up because on me, I feel like cardigans just don't look very nice when they're buttoned up. That's just my body type though. It's just how it goes. So this arrived and I am really, really happy with it. However, it does pain me to say that I think I'm just not cut out for wool. Maybe it's mohair or alpaca as well. But one of these things just really, really irritates my skin. So I really struggle to wear this cardigan if it's touching my skin. So basically I need to be wearing long sleeves or a mock neck, turtleneck to cover my neck as well, or a shirt that has a collar, something to stop it from touching my skin because I immediately get very, very uncomfortable. And I also get a little bit sniffly as well. I initially did say that I wasn't sure whether I was gonna keep it, but I have kept it and I really, really do like taking it out with me. It's a very, very solid option for when you are going out and you might be coming in and out of places where it'll be very warm inside and you don't wanna take a coat with you because it's quite bulky and heavy. Popping this on, almost instant warmth and it just really, really is easy to pack down and pop in your tote bag when you're going out and about. So overall, very, very happy with this. It's sad that it's getting towards warmer weather so it's not gonna get as much use until next year, but Overall, very, very happy with this cardigan. Okay, next up for tops, we have this Uniqlo Jill Sander collaboration, the Plus J collaboration. It is a bomber jacket in 3XL. So since this is from Japan, I did do a bit further research. And if you are looking for it from a Western country or a Western reseller, perhaps, you might want to get this in a 2XL. I don't think this went up to 3XL in Western countries, but I have learned that in Japan, you size down one to get a Western size. So the 3XL in Japan is 2XL in the West. So this is a gorgeous quilted bomber jacket filled with hybrid down. So it's very, very warm. And I sold my bomber jacket that I did have that I've had for quite a while now. I actually sold it to my housemate who is wearing it almost every day, loves it. However, I got to the point where I wasn't really enjoying the fact that it had a more fitted look on me. And I really wanted a bomber jacket where I could style maybe a hoodie or something underneath and have a little bit of extra room to layer as well. So I did 
grab this one. I was also super inspired by looking at many Rick Owens himself looks where he will wear a very, very large bomber jacket and pair it with maybe pod shorts or pants. And it just looks somehow quite nice. I, I don't know, but it really works. And I wanted to try and emulate something like that. But without having to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a Rick Owens piece, I opted for this gorgeous Unique Jill Sander piece, which I think looks the part. It looks fantastic. It has this lovely little shimmer. It feels very, very well constructed. And for the price, oof. I think the entire collection is definitely worth the price. And if you can find it secondhand, it'll be even cheaper as well. So probably my favorite Uniqlo collaboration. And there's actually a few pieces I still have my eye on to this day that I want to pick up. But yeah, love this bomber jacket. It's super, super comfy, has lots of pockets. And yeah, it kind of feels like a blanket too. So great for the cooler months. Okay, so finishing up with the tops, we have this lovely vintage. It does not have a brand name. It just has a tag with a number code on it that hasn't yielded any results. So I can't tell you who made this, but I did pick it up from a Japanese marketplace and it is a light double-breasted coat. Now, in the past, I had picked up a Uniqlo Jill Sander coat and I really, really love that coat. It is quite heavy though. And this one I saw and I loved the really giant lapels that it has and figured it looks a lot lighter and I'd love a lighter coat for the similar reason to the cardigan, something that is a lot less bulky and hard to carry around should you be trying to switch it up by taking it off and on pending where you're going in and out of. So I asked for the measurements of this, took a gamble on it, and I am so, so stoked on it. I'm happy that it's lined, so it's nice on my skin. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's got a couple of weird nicks to it. For example, these buttons are purely for show. They do not actually close anything on the inside of the jacket. They're just aesthetics. There's, there's not even a little hole in there. They're just purely aesthetic. Also, this little inner strap that is to connect to a smaller button on the other side to kind of keep the jacket a bit open and flowy. No button. So I guess I need to put one there in case I want to do that. But I generally just like to keep jackets like this open. And they feel quite nice with the airflow coming through and kind of blowing in the wind. It looks super, super cool. Overall, so happy with this coat. It's just so easy to pop on when you need to just get out and do something quickly. And, you know, it just levels up any look. So, so handy. Definitely recommend a double-breasted coat for any wardrobe. Okay, now moving on to bottoms. We have this pair of Yoji Yamamoto Ground Y. I'm just gonna call them wide pants because searching up the code didn't really yield much for me, but they are indeed wide. They are so wide, I have to tighten that draw cord so much to keep them on or really, really tighten the belt to the point where the pants kind of scrunch up a little bit. But I feel that's the point because this in a Japanese size was a size three which can be like an M to an L, but it's just so oversized. Yoji sizing is, can be ridiculous sometimes. So it's always great to check the measurements. And I did and thought, wow, these would fit almost anyone. So definitely pick them up. And I'm very, very happy with them. To note though, the disappointing part of these pants is that they have all these marks on them. You can sort of see there that there's these marks across the pants. They're also on the rear as well. I haven't been able to get rid of them and they were not described like having these buttons. So that's pretty disappointing. But on the other hand, I have been wearing these almost every other day. These are my choice pant to ride to work in. They dry very quickly, which is really, really handy. Comes out of the washing machine and they're basically ready to go. I don't know why they are a wool poly blend. Maybe that has to do with it. But just the comfort and fit of these pants is so, so nice. I feel like if I was going to try and make my own pants, I would get another pair of these, disassemble them and try and reconstruct them to get the fit absolutely right. Because they are just a dream. So comfy to wear, so light as well. I can kind of see myself wearing these in warmer months as the wool blend is not so, so warm. It kind of just sort of blocks out a little bit of 
wind, which makes it yeah really good for riding. Maybe that's why I like them. So yeah, definitely a favorite pan of mine. It basically is part of my uniform. I did make a video on the uniform that I basically wear every day to do my own things. And this is an integral part of that. So can't recommend these enough. If you can find a pair, whoa, you gotta jump on that because these are basically the pants. Okay, so then the final pair of bottoms, we have these gorgeous Yoji Yamamoto Ground Y Circle Pants. So now these are one of the most interesting pair of pants that I own. They're made of a triacetate blend, which is something I see in much higher end Yoji products. So I was very curious to see how it feels. And in hand, they are so, so light. Basically ideal for warmer months. The fabric just lets a lot of air through. So wearing them in cooler months, I generally want to wear something like high socks or long johns with them just to try and help me stay a little bit warmer because otherwise um, my legs are cold. They'll be so cold. They have these gorgeous frayed details at the hems, which I think are a different fabric altogether. It's like a layer of perhaps just cotton sewn over the top of the triacetate material. It's it's pretty fascinating, but these, these pants are huge. They're also asymmetrical, have a huge elastic waist as well to adjust for many sizes in addition to drawstrings. I really, really love the three-pronged attack of belt loops, elasticated waistband, and also drawstrings. It's just so handy and so useful gives you many, many options to try and hold the pants to your waist. They look so fantastic though, and just go so wide. Like the cut of these is fascinating. Looks like a giant drapey skirt, but they're actually pants. Asymmetrical where the rear goes a lot lower than the front. They're just incredible. Like I'm, I'm so blown away by these and just wanna wear them more. But I think the warmer months, maybe trans season from cold to glaringly hot are gonna, be the time when I'm gonna make the most of these for sure. But oh, I'm so happy with them and so happy they're part of my wardrobe now. All right, so that's it for pants, which means we finally have a pair of shoes to talk about. And here they are. Well, here's one of them. <laughs> here's what I prepared earlier. This is a pair of the Random Identities Worker Boots. They're made out of a beautiful calf leather with these lovely rubber details on the toe cap and the heel as well. They are Vibram sold for your pleasure and are some of the comfiest boots I've ever worn. They are also heeled, so they are my first pair of heels and I'm so happy to have been able to find these. Now, a bit of backstory for these. I became interested in heels like many of us after seeing the Rick Owens Kiss Heels. However, I just can't ever envision myself spending $2,000 on a pair of shoes that I wouldn't even know where to wear or how to wear. Enter Random Identities, a label that I have had a few pieces from throughout this whole capsule. Some have come through, some have been sold off, but I do still have the denim jacket, which I really, really love. And I saw that they also make a pair of heels. Now these retail for about a thousand dollars, which, you know, is a lot of money, even if that is half of what the Rick heels retail for. But I did notice that these secondhand in Japan of all places come through for an incredible deal. Now, initially I had picked up a pair in 42 because that seems to be a size that suits me in so many other shoes, say like Rick Owens, Junjay, Yoji Yamamoto. So they arrived, I put them on and they were an effort to put on. I wore them maybe twice and just figured these are just not it. They are so, so tough to get on. And I was really, really disappointed about that because I was super excited about the heels and was so happy to have them for them to just not be it was, yeah, it was rough. So I've been keeping an eye out for a pair in 43 and a few months later, these ones emerged. I jumped on them as soon as I could and these are the fit. I can slip them on, slip them off with or without a shoehorn, which is very, very important. I think I've stretched them out a little bit that I no longer need a shoehorn to wear them. So that's pretty cool. 
and they are just fantastic. Really, really comfy. I guess after a few hours do become uncomfortable, but maybe that's just because I have no experience with heels. So I just wear them around the house, try to get used to them and need to take them out for more spins. Somebody invite me out. Give me a reason to wear these because I love them and I'm so happy with them. Definitely keep an eye out on these secondhand if you are looking for a pair of heels. They are made in larger sizes to fit larger feet and are definitely worth the money. May need a little bit of upkeep in terms of the sole, but that's something that a cobbler can easily fix with glue that I found. But yeah, love these. Can't wait to wear them more and cannot recommend them enough. Definitely get them secondhand. All right, so with that, they are all the items that are part of this capsule wardrobe additions section haul thing, whatever you'd like to call it. Let's get into some looks. Let me know which one's your fave on the other side.
Okay, so that was six looks using the new pieces that are in this video along with other pieces from my capsule wardrobe previously. Which was your favorite one? I was really thinking about putting the bomber jacket over the long coat and I did, but it kind of looks a bit silly, so I didn't really film it. Maybe with a bit more confidence, maybe some Dutch courage, I would wear that out, but I'm just not sure. It'd probably be way too hot for me though, because I overheat really easily. And yeah, even just wearing that inside here, I, I was getting sweaty. <laughs> I'm so happy with the heels though. I think they look fantastic with jeans. They kind of give a feeling reminiscent to old school Rick Owens where he used to wear his similar looking heels with jeans and maybe a singlet top. It's just an interesting way to elevate a very basic look. Just wearing a pair of jeans that are nicely stacked and just put a pair of heels on and that immediately looks like an outfit, like you're going somewhere with purpose. And I love that, so easy. Really, really stoked on the coat and the bomber. Well, in fact, all the pieces and I have been wearing them quite a bit, except for the circle pants, as I said, because they just don't do so well in cooler weather due to the material they're made out of. But as it's getting warmer, you're going to see them a lot more in my rotation. So yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's really, really fun building this capsule wardrobe. And there's maybe a couple more videos to go, but we're nearing basic completion of this. I have done a couple more haul videos of just the packages when they arrive. And I think there's one more of that to go. So yeah, I think it's maybe two more videos and the wardrobe is basically complete. So look out for that. But otherwise, until then, take care of yourselves, have fun, be safe. And as always, don't do anything I'd do except measurements, 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 make sure to take them, make sure you know them. Put them as like a save note or even better get them like tattooed on the back of your hand or something and people will say hey what's that interesting tattoo you have and you're like oh they're just my measurements so i know what i'm doing when i'm trying to get clothes from anywhere really maybe it can be a conversation starter if it works tell them i sent you <laughs> be safe everyone see you next time